What's up guys, DRock1992 here. For this next video and for my next about video, I am going to be talking about a very famous um, Scottish actor. For sure synonymous with one huge franchise. I mean everybody will know what I'm talking about when I say the name. Uh, plus he's been known for other movies outside that franchise. And the guy I'm going to be talking about in this about video, Sean Connery. And, I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything right now, but there is one huge franchise that he's most known for. But, um, without further ado, I'm going to get right into it, get right into the filmography. There really is nothing in particular television-wise that he's been in. Uh, his debut, his film debut came all the way back in 1954 with a movie called Lilacs in the Spring. Uh, it was an uncredited role, and the role was undetermined. He, I, it's unknown what he played, but, I mean, a minor character, an uncredited character, so not anything really important, I guess. But that was his debut, and... It took him a little while to really get his footing in Hollywood. Get his footing in Hollywood as an actor. He had some supporting performances. There was a movie in 1959 called Tarzan's Greatest Adventure um, that he was in a, a supporting role in. The Frightened City in 1961, a supporting role. Um, so he had to try to find his footing. One of the first big movies that he was in was The Longest Day in 1962. And this one was, um, it's a memorable war movie. I mean, The Longest Day, about World War II. And The Longest Day has a bunch of stars. A bunch of big stars. John Wayne, Henry Fonda, um, and many, many more. Sean Connery has a supporting role in the film. And this is probably where he first got some notice as an actor. Got got noticed a little bit. And it's like people probably saw this movie and they're like, hey, Sean Connery. Cool. But the next movie brought him superstardom beyond his wildest dreams. The first James Bond movie, Dr. No. He is the original James Bond. And he is a lot of people's favorite Bond. Personally, for me, he's not my favorite Bond. I'll just say it. My favorite Bond is Timothy Dalton. He did two Bond movies. Connery did seven. But in 1962, he starred in the first James Bond movie, Dr. No. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know, James Bond... Has been adapt was adapted from a series of novels by author Ian Fleming, and they got adapted to movies, and there are twenty four no twenty three official James Bond films with a twenty fourth one coming out next year, um, and so that's. I mean, that, uh, 23 Bond films with a 24th on the way, and then two unofficial Bond films. So there really are 25 Bond films in, this, in the whole series. Um, 25 times where Bond has been portrayed in film, and Connery portrayed him in seven films, starting with Dr. No, which is not my favorite Bond movie, it's probably my least favorite out of all the Bond movies. A little shocking. I mean, it's the first one. But you could tell it was kind of the first one. The production... I mean, you look at the quality of the movie. Yes, it was 1962. But the quality of the movie wasn't as polished as other Bond movies. In particular. It just, they, it just wasn't. And... Well, the villain, Dr. No title villain was kind of a dud I mean yeah he was intimidating he was pretty uh, you know he was pretty violent but 
he didn't have pizzazz. He didn't have personality. And um, you could see how that could kind of suffer. But Doctor No is one of the highest rated Bond movies of all time, according to Rotten Tomatoes. So a lot of people liked it. It was the start. The next year, in 1963, the second James Bond film, From Russia With Love, came out. Now, From Russia With Love is one of my favorites. It's a pretty... It's a pretty simple Bond movie. No no BS in this movie at all. I mean, it's simple. It's action-packed. It's one of the originals, and, um, and I really like it a lot. And a movie outside of James Bond in 1964 was the movie Marnie, which is actually an Alfred Hitchcock film. Alfred Hitchcock, for those of you who don't know, world-famous director. I mean, has directed a lot of films. And Sean Connery was in, um, was in this Marnie movie. <coughs> the same year, he appears in Bond movie number three. Goldfinger, which is considered to be one of the best of all time. Uh, not one of my favorites. Not my favorite Bond movie. Uh, my favorite Bond movie is Goldeneye, from a later Bond actor, Pierce Brosnan, who I probably will be talking about, by the way. But Goldfinger, um, that really was a turning point for the franchise. I mean, you can't understate the value of Goldfinger as... I mean, I mean, the Bond Goldfinger was monumental to the Bond franchise. It really established Bond into the put Bond into the stratosphere, and put Connery into the stratosphere as a great Bond character. You know, Goldfinger took itself. It was one of the first movies where it didn't take itself dead seriously. Dr. No and From Russia With Love were dry Bond films. Goldfinger was a little, had a little more pizzazz. And, I mean, just look at one of the Bond villains in Goldfinger, Oddjob, um, who kills people with a hat, with his own hat. I mean, pretty ridiculous premises and pretty ridiculous stuff and things like that, but it makes it fun. Uh, the Bond film, you know... Goldfinger, not one of my favorites, but it you can't undervalue the significance of Goldfinger. The next year, in 1965, he actually he stars in the fourth Bond film, Thunderball. Thunderball is one of my favorites. I think I think it gets underlooked. I mean, in terms of early Bond films. I think it's underrated because a lot of the sequence is underwater. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the movie is underwater scenes, basically. But this one is definitely it escaped the sort of silliness of Goldfinger in a way, and it got more serious, kind of, and. Um, you know, Thunderball is one of the best, I think. Um, one of the more undervalued, underrated Bond films, I think. Um, a couple years later, in 1967, he stars in the fifth Bond film, You Only Live Twice, which is my favorite, my second favorite Connery film. Uh, this is a really good one. I mean, this is where you first meet Ernst Starvelo Blofeld, who is the main main Bond villain in the original Bond films, and you meet him face to face. Donald Pleasance uh, plays him, and you see it. And um, I mean, you only live twice. Just a espionage adventure type movie, and I mean, all Bond films are that way. But I mean. <coughs> You only live twice. For my money, I'll put my money on the um, end scene, the fight scene, and you only live twice as one of the best of all time. I mean, one of the best Bond fighting scenes of all time. Uh, and I'm talking about, for those of you who don't know, 
Blofeld's men versus Bond's ninja friends. They fight off against each other, and it's one of the best battle sequences of all time in Bond history, um, in my opinion. It's definitely very good. What's significant about You Only Live Twice, also, is that Connery started getting tired of the whole Bond persona. He wanted to be taken seriously as an actor. And when you're pigeonholed into one particular character, like Sean Connery was with James Bond, you know, you, you have some trepidation about continuing to do the franchise. And he basically had to be persuaded to do You Only Live Twice. And um, after that, he left. He left, he took off a film. On Her Majesty's Secret Service was um, the sixth Bond film, and that was starred in uh, George Lazenby was uh, Bond. And I'll be talking about him in a later video. But, um, but yeah, he got tired of the Bond character. Uh, 19, flash into 1971, and it was a big year. He was in a movie called The Anderson Tapes, which is notable as being one of Christopher Walken's first films. One of them. It wasn't his first film, but it was one of his first. One of his more written, uh, one of his first major film roles. But The Anderson Tapes, um, it's about this group of robbers, I believe, or something like that. They have to steal. It's a heist film. Uh, I watched a little bit of it uh, on TV. And it wasn't too bad. It was pretty good. I'd like to see the majority of it. I mean, I'd like to see all of it, definitely. Um, but 1971 was also significant because he returned to James Bond in the seventh Bond film, Diamonds Are Forever. Seventh official Bond film, Diamonds Are Forever, which is, without a doubt, the goofiest the most camp, I mean, the goofiest, campiest Bond film of all time. But I like it. It's pretty good. It is the goofiest Bond film of all time, for sure. And it was pretty good. You know, it was, I mean, it's so goofy, so campy and all that. It really started that kind of trend for Bond films. I think Diamonds Are Forever did that. And um, Sean Connery, you could see his age. He was showing his age a little bit in that film. Um, for sure. Uh, but it wasn't the last Bond film he did, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, I mean, one of the big things for Sean Connery was that he wanted to shed the image of James Bond. He, he didn't want James Bond to be his only legacy. He, he, you know, he didn't want his tombstone to read, Here lies Sean Connery, the man who played James Bond. I don't think he wants that. He wants, Here lies Sean Connery, a very versatile actor who played in roles other than James Bond. Um, you know, he's, he started to have success outside of Bond with 1974's Murder on the Orient Express. An ensemble cast film. Um, this is a whodunit type scenario, and um, you know it was one of his uh, films post Bond, after Diamonds Are Forever. Um, he starred in 1976 Robin and Mary, and he played Robin Hood. How cool is that? When you get to play Robin Hood, one of the great folk heroes of all time. How great is that? But yeah, I mean, Sean Connery played Robin Hood, another iconic character in cinematic history. Um, let's see here. He starred in a movie I watched. Uh, he starred in a movie that I watched in 1977 called A Bridge Too Far. Um, a war movie, another war movie. This is about World War II, as well as his role in The Longest Day. 
<coughs> and he um, is part of an ensemble cast in A Bridge Too Far. Um, you see him starting to really, at this point, establish himself beyond James Bond. He returns in 1983 as James Bond in the unofficial James Bond film Never Say Never Again, which is my favorite Sean Connery appearance as James Bond. It was the final Sean Connery appearance as James Bond. And it was his best one, I think. The best in, in terms of movie, definitely. If he, he showed his age in, in Diamonds Are Forever, he definitely showed his age in Never Say Never Again. But Never Say Never Again is basically a retelling of the fourth Bond film, Thunderball. Essentially, that's what it is. But yeah, that was... With that movie, he closed the chapter officially on James Bond. Um, then after that movie, he started to have more success outside of Bond. Uh, he starred in Highlander and The Name of the Rose in 1986, two big movies uh, with Sean Connery in them. He had a supporting role in Highlander, and he had a starring role in The Name of the Rose. Um, you know, two movies differed from each other, definitely, but good movies all you know movies all the same that really established him outside of Bond 1987 was a big year for him and he start he started the untouchables the story about Al Capone and the prohibition period and 1930s gangster stuff you know Robert De Niro in this movie played Al Capone Kevin Costner um a lot of great actors and actresses actors in this movie. Kevin Costner, Robert De Niro, and Sean Connery. Uh, how better could it be? I mean, wow. A, a star-studded cast in this movie. And Sean Connery wins the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. His first Academy Award win ever. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a good role for him. It's It really... You could almost say that and Highlander were his breakout films outside of James Bond. Um, 1989, he lent, he stars in another big franchise, um, the Indiana Jones franchise. And 1989's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he plays Indiana Jones' father. And it's a comedic role for him, definitely. He's the comedic side of things. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is a great, is a good movie, definitely. Sean Connery adds something to that for sure. He's definitely good in it. Um, he starred in The Hunt for Red October in 1990. It was this is movies notable as being the first Jack Ryan film. Jack Ryan is uh, another uh, iconic character in spy, espionage type uh, stories. And in The Hunt for Red October, he plays a guy who defects, who attempts to defect from Russia, I believe it is. And he plays a Russian guy. And Sean Connery is Scottish. So... That's an actor right there when you can play a different um, act, when you can play a Russian character when you're actually a, from Scotland. Um, 1991, he stars in the sequel to Highlander, which I never knew there was a sequel, Highlander 2 The Quickening. Um, he appears in an, un in an uncredited cameo in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. That's a good movie, by the way. I really like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves a lot. Um, some movies in the mid to late 90s, definitely to mention. Um, First Night in 1995, he stars as the iconic character in... Uh, iconic character King Arthur. Um, it's a supporting role, I believe. 
and it's him and Richard Gere. Um, and Sean Connery is pretty much a you know a starring character in the movie. Uh, Dragonheart. Uh, is a movie 1996 he was in. Um, it's a voiceover, actually. It actually was a voiceover. Probably one of his first voiceovers. <coughs> I think it was one of his first voiceovers. But one of his best roles outside of James Bond was also in 1996 with The Rock. I love The Rock. It is such a good action movie. I love the movie. It's him and Nicolas Cage, by the way. And they have to rescue they have to rescue hostages from uh, there's this terrorist group. They're basically terrorists. They were former American soldiers and uh, turned terrorists who take over Alcatraz prison and threaten to kill many people unless the government pays them uh, millions of dollars. So what does the government do? They they bring in Nicolas Cage's character, who's a scientist, and Sean Connery's character, who is a prisoner, a convict. Um, and they put them together. The Rock, uh, one of the most uh, prominent lines in the, that Sean Connery says in the movie, in the movie The Rock, uh, uh, first of all, one of the most memorable roles that Sean, when one of the most memorable lines that Sean Connery has in the Bond films is, "My name is Bond, James Bond." The iconic thing to say there. Uh, also, another one that he does in Goldfinger, shocking, positively shocking. In The Rock, uh, he says. Something along the lines of, losers go home, winners go and fuck the prom queen. I mean, it's just a funny line, definitely. Uh, just one that I want to <laughs> mention there. It's a funny line, uh, definitely. But The Rock is an all-time action movie for me. Uh, in uh, 1998... He actually starred in a movie called The Avengers. Not the Avengers that you're thinking of. The one in 2010, or 2012, Iron Man, Captain America, all that. Not that. But there was actually another Avengers movie that came out. It was actually an adaptation of the British television series The Avengers of the same name from the 60s. And <coughs> Sean Connery was in the film. In that film, uh, the 1998 Avengers. Um, 2003, go all the way to 2003, and Sean Connery stars in his last live action role, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, a movie that I've actually watched. It did not get good reviews, and it, it flopped. It was a flop. But despite it being kind of complicated. I did like it. You know, I like the action in it. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, very significant because it's Sean Connery's last role. Last live action role. His last films, his last film came in 2012 with a voiceover in the movie Sir Billy. Um, and then that's it. Sean Connery is retired from acting. He retired after 2003, and after 2003, he only did that one movie, Sir Billy. But The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was his last live-action movie. And um, it's a shame, definitely, that he's not in movies anymore, but he's getting up there in age. He's in his 80s right now. <clears throat> and he's just, you know... He definitely, some may argue he didn't retire on top, but I mean with all the accomplishments he's had in his career with James Bond, with the Indiana Jones movie, with a lot of other movies outside of James Bond, 
Many will argue that he's cemented his place in history as one of the best actors of all time. I mean, a lot of people will say he is the best James Bond adaptation of all time. But you look at his other stuff, he's a pretty damn good actor. That's the fact right there. And um, that's it for the uh, Sean Connery video. D-Rock 1992 out.